My name is Torgner Oxo. I'm in the business of develop university teaching. I've been doing so for almost 30 years. And I'm here to talk about cultural change in teaching, that is going from a teaching culture which favors individuals not talking to each other, where you have silos of teaching, to go to a culture where people actually talk to each other, even challenge each other and write about teaching. When I arrived at the Faculty of Engineering at Lund University in 1992, the dean told me that I couldn't say the word pedagogy because that was a bad word in that uh, department or in that faculty. What he also said was that talking to others about their teaching would be like showing interest to the personal hygiene. So obviously teaching was not something they talked about, they just did that. Today it's very different. Today we have a culture where people actually write about their teaching, they talk to each other about teaching, and there is a developed language in this faculty now about how to do teaching. We have people coming traveling to watch what we are doing. We also have done peer review among ourselves. We had the external review and we have measurement from students that we are actually developing teaching so things are becoming better. This is a sign of a developed culture in teaching. To understand what actually goes on here, we have to look into the term culture. What does that mean? Well, usually we consider culture to be something which is traditional, something that happened over a long time, and it has to do with how we assign meaning to certain things. Yes, we meet every morning, we say hi to our colleagues, and we look at things in slightly similar ways as we did the day before. We look at students, we look at teaching methods, we have tacit assumptions we never talk about, and all these things makes up the teaching culture where I work. That would be a disciplinary community, perhaps in a department, but we're all part of that. Okay, so we have to look into what that culture really is. But first, what it does. It saves a lot of energy for us. We don't have to talk to each other at full length, do to understand each other fully every day. We can just count on each other to, to do more or less the same as we did the, the day before. And that means that we can lower our cognitive energy. We don't have to think that much and we don't have to worry about the others. It's a very efficient thing, but things get hidden, things we don't talk about anymore. So, if we now want to move even closer into culture and see what that is, we come to the conclusion that culture is constructed during interaction between people. That's when we recognize we are in the same place, we're doing similar things, and people in the other houses, they do other things. Over here, this is what we do, and this is how we do it. And that is negotiated through interaction. Okay, so let us now see what, what, how many people do teachers actually talk to about teaching? We checked that in our university and we found that teachers talk more or less to four plus minus two others about their teaching. Here we're talking about real conversation, important conversations where you discuss problems, your first idea, you, you talk about a success or something that went really ill for you in teaching. That's where we talk about these things. Those who, with whom we talk now, we call them the significant others. Those that are really important for us. It means that other people are also important, but not just that important. When the significant others say something, you listen. A way to define significant others are that those are the people that I allow to influence myself. And let's say, go back again to four plus minus two. It means that I have a few of these. These four plus minus two would mean my personal significant network in teaching and learning. Together with them, I discuss teaching experiences. Together with them, I negotiate what is teaching reality, how to understand it and what it is. This is the core of the teaching and learning culture. Now that has to do with identity, it has to do with friendship and all those things. So if we want to change that, and this is what we have to do, we have to get into those conversations and influence them. That is not easy because they always take place backstage, privately, in an office, by the coffee machine, the water cooler, in a car, in a phone call, and they're always edited when others come about. We have collected narratives about these significant conversations and people are very aware of with whom they talk and when and who is listening. 
So they are private. We can't find them. Bosses can't find them, even though they are dependent on them. Because when the boss says that something is in a certain way, that message will be negotiated between significant others. And the outcome of that significant conversation, that defines what the boss actually said. So if we can't now control what, what people talk about, because they will talk about what they find meaningful and they talk about it privately, so we can't control that. We can control another thing, namely the report from these conversations. If we look at the research culture, we don't look into people's research. We look at the reports from the research, and that we peer review heavily for the benefit of the quality. We can do the same thing with teaching and learning cultures. We can demand people to come up over the private barrier and report from their significant conversations. So we have then to, to give them a format which is effective in that culture. So in the Faculty of Engineering where we work, we have defined it to be 1300 words. There are two columns, they are times 10, very dense text that we use because they are familiar with that kind of text. It's very similar to many of the conferences that engineers go to. So what we ask from them is not to change their conversations in the significant networks, but to formulate a report from them. And we collect those reports. Now we have a database of 500 of those reports that we can show the others in the Faculty of Engineering. So what we know now is that they talk to each other, they write to each other, and they also read what they have uh, written to each other. And that constitutes a much better conversation about teaching and learning. It constitutes a change in the culture of teaching and learning. And the only thing we did was to get a format where we get the report from the backstage conversations. So you might say that the entire strategy that we use in the Faculty of Engineering at Lund University is to get more conversations and better conversations and that will develop the teaching, the education and for the benefit of student learning. That's the story from Lund University. Thank you very much.